Okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about how to analyze your design context. This could also be kind of uh, described, I suppose, as how to start your project off, how to come up with your design problem or your uh, situation and things and, and explore this. Now, it's gonna be useful if you've, uh, you're in your GCSE uh, for AQA and it's gone past the June the 1st where the new contexts are outlined. So it will be useful for you uh, as to how to use those contexts and kind of explore them uh, to enable you to come up with a project. It could also be useful for A-level students who are generating their um, context from scratch. You could probably apply the same sort of technique. And also at AS level where you have those contexts at hand as well. So we're going to have a start at this and I'm going to talk a little bit about an approach or a method that you could use to um, go through this process. And then I'll give some examples as well of how to actually use it and seeing it in action using some existing context that we've seen before. So first of all, the approach I'm going to uh, explain, I'm calling, is the 3 2 one approach to analyzing your context. Okay, And what we're also going to be talking about is the five W's and one H. So you can look out for those uh, when you go through, but they are uh, who, what, why, when, how, uh, and where. Okay, So we've got lots of different um, uh, words, starter words, I suppose, to kind of help us describe uh, a, a situation. So first of all, if we're given our context, the first thing I'll probably do is put my context right in the middle of a new sheet of page. Personally, I like to do this on paper first, so a big sheet of A3 paper. Put your context maybe in a bubble or something like that in the middle of the page, so it's a good starting point going forwards. What I then do is uh, branch out from that first uh, central context, okay, and come up with three places where there could be an issue in relation to this context and also who each of these contexts or each of these problems or issues that you come up with affects okay so we've got a context in the middle and then we go one two three around the outside and just list three places and underneath each place we think about that place and who might be in that place for example a consumer or a client now from these three places we're then going to branch out twice from each area to two new um, points effectively and from each one of those points we're going to give two examples of what a problem might be or what the, that user that who might experience in that place that again is related to the context that we've chosen so just two we've done three now we do too. And then finally, once we've got three places and from each of those places, we've decided upon two problems that exist in those uh, places. What we're gonna do is just put one potential product or solution or uh, starting point, I suppose, uh, to help solve or alleviate that problem. These could be things that you know of, it could just be an abstract idea, but that's what you're gonna try and do. So doing it this way, um, in my opinion, it's a good way to get things started. Okay, so it means you'll have three places where issues occur in relation to the context. Out of each of those three, you'll have two examples of problems that exist in those contexts, and out of each of those, you'll have a further solution for each of the projects, which could be starting points for your uh, your chosen projects, your NEA, effectively. Now, once you've got your starting point, you can then ignore the three, two, one approach, and then go to add and improve and extend your project more, which is what I'd expect higher achieving students, you know, the level sevens, eights, nines, or you know, the A's and B's in the uh, the A level to kind of be doing. So what we do is once we've completed that three, two, one, we go back and we add, okay? What you can add is perhaps to explain why. So you've got a load of problems that you've, you've kind of listed, okay? And they could be coming from your own head, your own context, your own experience, okay? It's very useful um, to do a bit of research to en enable you to justify some of these things. An easy way to do this effectively is if you say that there's a problem, let's just say sharp knives in the kitchen, I'm gonna probably talk about this later in the video. If you can see that there's a problem on, on that, you could then I don't know, find a, an, an internet website that backs up and justifies your point, and it may even extend the knowledge. So when we've got uh, the problem Problem there we could add to that and we can explain why these things are issues what what the sort of things happen I don't know kids cut their fingers and so on and so forth okay we could also put in some hyperlinks of some websites we've visited to kind of reinforce and justify that that process because it's going to enable us to show the examiner effectively that we're doing some research albeit probably secondary okay what you can also do to add 
to the process once you've gone through the 3 2 1, you've done the basics and you've got a good starting point and you're, you're well underway. Is we could talk about perhaps when these issues occur, so the sort of times a day, or um, you know, to give a bit of context there. And we can then go back and look at the other areas of the five W's and one H and just add and add and add. Okay, so we could go back to where and we could come up with lots of other situations whereby this con context might occur. We could talk about who within each of those contexts might be a potential consumer and what their problems are and why their issues and how you might solve them and so on and so forth so if you follow this process you just use the three two one just to get the starting points down you'll get a lot of points down there as a starting point and you can then go on and extend this for either uh, further research on the internet um, you might even look at you know solutions existing on the internet and maybe put some links to those okay or you can also use the internet to back up and justify uh, some of the things that you're saying to prove that they are real uh, and and feasible uh, problems okay so that's the process the free to run process using the five w's and one h okay um, what i'm going to do now is just using some existing context that we've probably seen before from last year okay i'm going to use this context to just show you what it looks like in real life and then after that you can have a go and see if you can apply it to the new context or maybe the, the context that you've chosen for your nea okay good luck